Pelosi and her fellow liberals are at it again, pandering promises of pay this and pay that. President Trump and the Senate Republicans say, <laughs> not so fast, as congressional conservatives attempt to pause the continued wasteful spending wish list of the left. What's in this bill and what else is in the Democratic playbook of American demise? I'll break all of this down and more as we tackle these socialistic shenanigans on this week's episode of the Closet Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Wright. Let's get started. House Democrats unveiled the massive coronavirus relief bill, dubbed the HEROES Act on Tuesday, the fifth proposed legislation related to the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. What pet projects has Pelosi tucked away in this $3 trillion bill? Let's dive in and take a look. One, the bill would establish a $200 billion HEROES Fund to ensure that essential workers receive hazard pay in the amount of an additional $13 per hour on top of the regular wage. Another, the proposal would extend a $600 per week boost in unemployment insurance established under the CARES Act until January of 2021. Third, it would provide up to $10,000 in debt relief to be applied to private student loans to be paid in monthly installments by the Treasury Department until September 2021. Fourth, the proposal calls for an additional $75 billion for coronavirus testing, contact tracing, and isolation measures. It would also ensure that all Americans could receive free coronavirus treatment. And fifth, the bill designates $100 billion in emergency assistance to low-income renters to help them avoid eviction. And sixth, the bill would implement another round of direct payments to Americans providing $1,200 to every family member, including children, and up to $6,000 per household. Has your mind begun to swell? Ah, I know. These figures are absolutely staggering. The bad news is, I'm just getting started. The HEROES Act also gives $25 billion in assistance to the Postal Service, which is expected to run out of money again by late September without any congressional aid or interference. Second, the legislation will provide expanded food assistance to struggling families through a 15% increase in SNAP benefits. It also gives $20 million for the Arts and Humanities Foundation. And lastly, the bill allocates $3.6 billion in grants to states to set up mail-in voting for the upcoming 2020 presidential election. Folks, that is Pelosi and Kamala Harris's perfect, perfect plan. And now that I've hit the high spots of this absolute fiscal nightmare, I'm here to tell you Democrats want to ruin this country financially, and the proof is in the pandering pudding. I want to dissect this just a little bit more. Out of the $3 trillion, only $10 billion is being set aside for small businesses. The HEROES Act was established by the left to pad the pockets and provide peace of mind of their pandered base. And yes, this includes the liberal state and local governments who for years have squandered money and were bleeding red long before COVID ever crashed upon our nation's shores. States, cities, territories, and tribes would receive a combined $910 billion in funding to assist them in their budget shortages. To be fair, the closing of businesses has led to a tremendous decrease in tax revenues. Folks, I get that. But for over a decade, Democratic-controlled locales have loosely spent millions on liberal-led pet projects. And now they're broke. They were broke before COVID. Now they're really broke. And many states under conservative leadership, unlike the Democrats, 
have recorded budget surpluses before COVID. And instead of mailing refund checks or giving the state employees unnecessary pay increases, saved these dollars for rainy days. You know, the ones in case something happens. I don't know, like a a novel virus that comes and kills our economy. Florida Senator Rick Scott called out Newark Governor Cuomo and other states for the situation that they are in, and he issued this statement. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said that it was irresponsible and reckless not to bail out states like his, a state with 2 million fewer people than the state of Florida and a budget almost double the size of theirs. The opposite is true. It's irresponsible and reckless to take money from American taxpayers and use it to save liberal politicians from the consequences of their poor choices. For decades, Democrats have favored unionized workforces and deliberately seek to incentivize a mediocre at best work ethic. Under the HEROES Act, liberals again say it's okay not to return to work. For under Pelosi's newly proposed bill, $600 payments would extend through January of next year, and individuals would refrain from returning to work because they'd be getting paid not to. This proud, pandering moment of the left does absolutely nothing to help out employers and small businesses who will need an immediate and qualified workforce stat to begin normal business operations. And let us not forget that the $600 payment is more than some individuals were earning before COVID. To some, they're earning double. With this bill's passing, the Democrats can effectively illustrate an attempt to provide teeth to their claim for a need for a higher minimum wage of $15 an hour. Folks, this is something that the Democrats have been shoving down our throats for years and years and years. And now, they've got the perfect opportunity. And here's their plan. $15 an hour for a 40-hour work week comes to, you guessed it, $600 a week. The current amount that Pelosi and the other Democrats are wanting to extend in unemployment insurance until January of 2021. Folks, the Dems are absolutely diabolical. They have thought this puppy through to the fullest. And now come to Pelosi's prized possession and her attempt to, and her ultimate goal, to provide Americans with free college education. And like I mentioned before, the HEROES Act will provide for $10,000 and across-the-board student loan forgiveness for federal student loan borrowers. Also, the bill would extend the suspensions of all payments, interest, penalties, and collections on government-held federal student loans also till 2021. In fact, September of 2021. So in reality, there's 44 million Americans with student debt. They would each receive $10,000 and pay absolutely not one red cent for a total of 18 months on their loans if you combined the six months that was given to them under the CARES Act and the additional 12 months under this new HEROES Act. And there you have it, folks. A breakdown, an absolute breakdown of just how much money the liberals plan to squander. But the only question is, there isn't a single House or Senate Democrat that has proposed or even alluded to a repayment plan on the total $9 trillion that could be spent on COVID-19 should the HEROES Act be signed into its totality. On Thursday, Pelosi stated that she is proposing the Democratic version of the HEROES Act, and she wanted to see where the Republicans stood on it. You see, folks, that's just how methodical Pelosi and the other members of the left are. Initially, the new stimulus bill dubbed the HEROES Act, 
that's proposed by the Democrats started at just $1.2 trillion. I say that loosely, just $1.2 trillion. But, you know, liberals throw out billions and trillions like, you know, it's fives and tens. But seemingly overnight, the $1.2 trillion swelled to $3 trillion. And why? Because it's all part of Pelosi and other House Democrats' negotiation tactics. Pelosi and the liberals know dang well they do not stand a snowball's chance in getting a $3 trillion bill passed through the Senate. And even if it made it through the Senate, President Trump said he would veto the thing. However, her tactic is this. During the revision process, if the Republicans shoot down the entire bill, the left will manifest a joint effort assault and label conservatives as COVID victim haters, unconcerned with the well-being of our nation. Pelosi has painted House and Senate Republicans into a corner yet again, and ultimately, the president. Trump has promised, like I said, to veto the Democratic version of the HEROES Act. Still, he knows how the Democrats work and he will have to end up working with the congressional Republicans to pass some mutually agreed-upon version of this additional package. You know, instead of the $3 trillion, Congress and the President will likely meet the Democrats in the middle at, let's say, $1.5 trillion, and Pelosi will still get some version of her pandering pet projects funded. Folks, if you have listened to me long enough, on any of my podcast episodes or read any of our blogs or my blogs on the on the Liberty Loft, you'll know I'm all about trying to debunk democratic myths. And I want to break down some of their fuzzy liberal math and I want to shed some light on the financial implications of our government's drunken sailor approach to this COVID-19 spending. A wide variety of possible COVID death rates have been tossed about lately. You know, 100,000, 150,000, 200,000, perhaps more? Well, I want to provide some figures that will absolutely make your head spin. And here goes. Let's say that 200,000 Americans truly die from the coronavirus. And with the possibility, after the Fed kicks in money, the possibility of $9 trillion in federal spending as a result of COVID... That equates, are you ready? That equates to $45 million per COVID death. I'll say it again. That equates to $45 million to be spent on every single person in the United States that died of COVID-19. And that is if 200,000 Americans die from this virus. And with not all the money spent so far, the federal government has spent $2.4 trillion. So let's give an, give an illustration to the $2.4 trillion that's already been spent. All right, you ready for this visual? According to the World Bank, consider the $2.4 trillion that's been spent by Congress for COVID-19. Imagine that and $1 bills. And we're going to stack those $1 bills 68.3 square miles, which is the size of Washington, D.C. You would be able to stack up 140 $1 bills all across 68.3 square miles, the size of Washington, D.C., And that would give you a visual of just truly how much money that we've already spent. Again, that is $2.4 trillion. To put it another way, $2.4 trillion exceeds the total national and annual output of China, Japan, Germany, the United Kingdom, France, and India. The Democrats' solution to a financial COVID cure is to print more money. Heck, AOC has routinely made this statement. 
The government can just print more money. That's what she says. And like her, many other members of the left, printing more ultimately reduces the over our overall value of our of our of our dollar. Money is valued on you having more than the other guy. I hate to say it, but that's what it is. Money is valued on one person having more than the other person. In a free market, wealth is expected to be scarce. Not everyone can be a millionaire. And I know that that's going to make some people upset. That's just the way it goes, folks. In this world, not everybody gets a trophy and not everybody can be a millionaire. And in a healthy, free market, not everyone can be on the top. I'll say that again. In a healthy, free market society, not everyone can be a millionaire. Not everybody can be a CEO. Not everybody can live at the top. And that's just the way that it goes. Democrats want to provide everyone with more equal amounts of something, anything, and really it doesn't matter. But their main focus is they want to provide equal amounts of money. But no matter how much or how little of something that the government intends to offer, when they do that, when liberals stand before America on national television and they say, we're going to give you uh, free health care, we're going to give you free child care, we're going to give you free money, we're going to give you free food. Folks, doing that by definition, simply to state that is socialistic. That is not the role of our government. That is not the role of any government. It never was the intention of our founders. Democrats are paving the way for doom for our country. In their eyes, utter demise will illustrate to people that the government is the only entity that can protect Americans. You throw some pandering promises to the masses, produce them with a minuscule $1,200 refund check of their own money, mind you, dangle some free education in front of them, and shazam! Our near 245-year-old democracy is now a socialistic state. I want to thank you all again for tuning in to today's episode. I want to remind you, if you haven't already, head on over to the Liberty Loft. Check out our other podcasts available for download. Folks, we are blazing the way of conservative thought here at the Liberty Loft. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the liberals on their heels and they are running for cover. So click on over, check out what we have to offer. We appreciate your support and you'll be glad. You'll be glad you head over there. I'm your host, Eric Wright, and this has been the Closet Conservative Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our podcast. Please remember to give a five-star review and share our podcast with your friends. The Closet Conservative Podcast is a production of the Liberty Loft. Copyright, the Liberty Loft, 2020. You can find more shows and information on our website, www.thelibertyloft.com, or any of our social media channels.